Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and I am the person behind Crazy Sock Lady. I am the owner of Crazy Sock Lady Co. You can find links for everywhere that you can find me right down below this video. I am the Crazy Sock Lady on Instagram and Ravelry as well. It's been quite a while. <laughs> a very long while since I had a video up here on YouTube. I think February 23rd I looked this morning. I think February 23rd was the last podcast that went up. Things are good. So many of you have been so kind and checked in and things things are good. Just life has been busy. Um, personal life, work life, things have just been very busy, but all, all things are good. So I'll catch you guys up later on life stuff towards the end of the episode as well as on things for the shop because there have been so many fun things with Crazy Sock Lady Co. happening lately. So I will fill you all in on all of that later. But first we're gonna talk about knitting. Oh, and I will um, chat a bit about Summer Sock Camp. I've had a lot of questions about that. So we'll chat about that a bit later as well. But first, let's just jump in with all the knitting things because like I said, it's been a while and there's been a lot <laughs> that's happened, but I am going to try to not make this episode be hours long. We're gonna try our hardest, so. Finished things. I have quite a few socks, of course. One I do not have here, and I'm gonna have to still remember to talk about it. It's in my notes, though. I have a finished sweater. Let's start with socks. I think this is everything. It's been so long, I'm not positive. And like I said, one pair is not here. Let's go ahead and talk about that before I forget. So I will put a picture up here. I knit these socks for my husband, Eric. This is out of Opal True Love and the color number is 9863. This is some yarn that we are now carrying in the shop over at Crazy Sock Lady Co. We are out of the green, this exact green, but we have this same yarn in blue and orange, both which are beautiful as well. So Opal is a great sock yarn. It's very rustic feeling and hard wearing. It's some of the yarn that Eric, um, I've knit a lot of socks for him out of Opal yarns and he reaches for those more often than not and they still look amazing. So it's definitely one that I recommend. I'm so excited to be carrying some of the Opal yarn over in the shop. So that one, I just, all of these were knit on US1 2.25 millimeter needles and mm, I think all of them, yes, were knit following my vanilla sock patterns. And I think they were all magic loop as well. So all the details for all those are right up front. And I will have project pages linked below this video. And that's where you can find all details on any project that I make. It's gonna be right over there. So last, let's see, I think, was I working on these last time? Maybe. I knit, this is Heidi and Lana yarn Stardust, maybe, is the main color. It was a sock set. And I had knit a pair of Journey socks out of this and then I was using the leftovers and I knit a pair of socks for my mother-in-law. So here are those. Just normal slip stitch heel flap for all of these and gusset, that's just what fits me and the people that I knit for the best. Oh, I'm just remembering I have another pair of socks that's not here. I'll do those next so that I don't forget. The trouble with the not recording for a month is that so many things pile up and it's just like, how do you remember everything? I'm not good at like jotting down notes as I go throughout you know, the couple of weeks or the month in between recordings. So I have to try to remember all of the things. So if I forget anything, it's, it's probably gonna happen and I'm gonna forget some things. But anyway, so I knit these for my mother-in-law. I love this yarn. It feels very rustic as well, but still soft. And I did do the contrast for all three heels, toes, and cuffs for that. I have 
the other pair that's not here I knit for my friend Jenny. What made me think of this is all of these are slip stitch heel flop and gusset socks. That's what I usually always knit, but I do love doing heels like an afterthought heel and things like that. So I had really been wanting to do one and they don't fit anyone that I typically knit for. Me, my husband, my mother-in-law, the boys, they just do not fit well um, for any of us. And I've tried extra rounds. So many people said, do extra rounds before you do the decreases. That's how I've always done them. Um, I'll link my tutorial here if you've never done an afterthought heel and you wanna check it out. But yeah, that's what I, I've always done and I always suggest is that you knit more rounds depending on how much depth you need before you do the decreases. They still just don't fit that well, even with adding extra rounds in there. So anyways, my friend Jenny said, just knit, knit them and I'll gladly take them. So she got these socks. This yarn was Amplifiber yarn. I had had this in my stash for a little while. It was crystallized sugar. And I did the afterthought heel where you cut in no waste yarn. That's my favorite way to do it. So I did those and I gifted those to her when I saw her the weekend before last. I had a knitting weekend with her and some friends and it was so much fun. So I gifted those to her then and they fit her perfectly. I have knit her one pair of socks before years and years ago, maybe like six years ago, probably. And I've, I haven't knit her a pair of socks since. So these fit perfect. I didn't even have to measure her foot or anything. I just got her shoe size did how I teach in my tutorials on how to knit your socks and how to, you know, the length to do that's in my patterns and things and they fit her perfect. So that was the other pair. So that makes what? One, two, three, four, six pairs of socks since the last time. Last episode, I was getting ready to go on a knitting retreat and that retreat was put on by Lambikin's Hideaway Yarn Shop, which is in Hamilton, Ohio. The retreat itself was in Indiana. It was such a fun weekend. I went with two of the ladies from my knitting group, Ashley and Leah, and we just had the best time. Leah described it the best way as it was just like a knit night from when we got there on Friday to when we left on Sunday. It was great. Everyone was so nice. We are already planning to go back next year. I can't wait. It was just a great relaxing weekend. So I've had two knitting weekends <laughs> since the last episode. That is not the norm. They just happen to end up being around that same time and so close together. But yeah, so there's been quite a bit of knitting and knitting with friends, which is always amazing. But last episode, I was talking about what I was going to cast on to work on. So I ended up casting on these socks two at a time. This is Dragon Horde yarn, and I cannot remember the colorway name. Let me pull up my project page on Ravelry. It is a very old colorway. I have had this probably for four years. Um, Drought of the Living Dead. So I knit these two at a time, which I have not done in a while. And I, I love doing that too. I just, it's not something I typically will knit. Mostly I just don't like having to wind the yarn into two 50 gram balls. So they don't end up getting knit two at a time, but these were fun to do. These are for Eric. He'll be glad that he can finally have these now. Um, and that's what I knit while we were at the retreat was I worked on those. While at the retreat, Ashley and I bought a skein of Fiber Seed. They did have a couple of vendors, Fiber Seed, McMullen Fiber Co. And then Lambikins did have some yarn and things there as well. So Ashley and I bought a skein of Fiber Seed. I can't remember the name of this one. Neon Flamingo. Yes, Neon Flamingo. We split the skein of yarn and I knit shorty socks. That is getting get blown out the sun. It was so dreary here this morning and the sun is finally trying to come out. So it's gonna get a little blown out. 
but it, I mean, it is very bright. I mean, by the name, Neon Flamingo, but yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. I have never worked with fiber seed yarn and I bought a couple of other skeins and things from them. So you'll see those as I, as I cast on. I did not bring up all the yarn that I bought at the retreat because like I said, I'm trying not to have this be a crazy long episode. I did 15 rounds for the cuff, knit two purl two ribbing. That's the ribbing on all of these, isn't it? Two purl two. And then I did 10 rounds for the leg. For shorties, you can do anything that you wish. There's no right or wrong amount that you need for the cuff or the leg. It's just whatever you prefer. So um, I don't know. That's just kind of what I was feeling and went with. Ashley has finished hers too. They turned out very pretty. The last pair of socks, I just kitchenered the toe on these this morning. So this is Cascade Heritage Prince yarn. And this is another yarn that is new to Crazy Sock Lady Co. If you've never used Cascade Heritage Prince, it's a very affordable and very soft, lovely, sock yarn. Um, we have quite a few choices over in the shop. They all kind of self pattern or self striping. They're so much fun. So this one was color number. We are currently out of stock of this specific color in the shop, but I'm hoping to get more soon. It is color number 108. Like I said, we still have plenty of other ones in stock. This one went super fast. I love the purples, blues, and greens. And a lot of the ladies in my knit night got this same color. And then we kind of had a fun little challenge. And me, Ashley, and Sarah all started that Thursday that we had, we had a knit group at the shop one evening and that was St. Patrick's Day, actually. And we were trying to see who could get done <laughs> first. Ashley won. <laughs> I did not win that challenge. It's like, how did that happen? But okay, that's all of the socks. Kind of quick through those. I don't think I've forgotten any of those, but I do have a finished sweater that I still need to cut the ends on. Look at this, they're woven in, it's been blocked, everything. I just <laughs> still need to snip these ends. So I finished my cartwheels pullover. This is a sweater that I started for the crazy cabled sweater cow that I am co-hosting with Lindsay of Sock Witchery. You still have time to participate in this. Whips are allowed. It ends, I think, June 1st. All the details can be found in both of our Ravelry groups. But yes, mine's done. I'm gonna try it on really quick for you. It is, it turned out perfect. It is big, oversized, and that's exactly what I wanted. I knew when I, I really wanted to do an all over cabled sweater and I knew when I did that, I wanted something just oversized and so comfy that I could just throw on over top of a shirt I already have on in the winter just for lounging here or if we're gonna go to a brewery on the weekend and have brunch or lunch or you know, whatever. I wanted it to be something very, very cozy. So let me try this on for you and then we'll talk about the pattern and everything. So here is like, oh, it is so, so cozy. I did end up doing a split hem I just did it, it's a seamed. Okay, so you knit it in pieces. Bottom up is how you do the front and the back and then you seam all the pieces together. So when I was seaming together, I just left this open. I just kind of liked the look of a split hem. The front and the back are the same. The sleeves have the pattern going down. Oh my goodness, you guys, I love it. It's just so warm and cozy. It's kind of perfect for today. It's We've had some warmer days, but it's kind of chilly today, so this is perfect. 
I really, in my mind, I wanted this to look like I had grabbed like a sweater out of Eric's half of the closet and threw it on. And it's just, it's perfect. It's exactly how I wanted it to be. So this is the Cartwheels Pattern by Rita Taylor. I got it off of the Knit Picks website. And then I also, it's in a book. Um, if you look on my Ravelry project page, follow that link. It'll take you to the pattern and show you the book and everything. So many beautiful patterns in that. I knit this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in the Icicle Heather colorway. It's a beautiful blue that a lot of the times looks gray <laughs> in pictures, but yeah, it turned out perfect. I knit the size large. Typically, like looking at the pattern sizes for this, I would have knit myself a size small um, to have more of kind of what it recommended in the pattern. I would have kind of been in between a small and a medium. So I probably would have went with a small. And I did a large to get that oversized, comfy look that I wanted. I'm trying to think if there was anything else with this. I followed the pattern exactly with the exception of that hem and that was super easy. I just didn't, didn't continue the stitching through there. Like I said, these are already woven in. I just need to snip them. <laughs> I think I snipped everything else in the sweater, but for some reason I didn't snip those. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I just need to snip those and we're good to go. I need to take it to knit night tonight because I have not even taken it and shown them. Maybe I'll just wear it because it's a little breezy and the sun's trying to come out, but it's a cloudy still. So yeah, maybe I'll just wear this tonight instead of a coat because it's perfect for that. Oh, and because I know somebody will ask, this cardigan that I had on is not hand knit. I always get asked when I wear this what the pattern is, but it is, it is unfortunately a store-bought <laughs> cardigan. <laughs> I might just leave this sweater on. It's very, very comfy. This is my first time knitting a anything, I think, out of Wool of the Andes, and I absolutely love it. It is a little bit... It's not like super scratchy. I mean, it's not a super wash yarn. What is it actually? It is a worsted weight too, by the way. I don't think I said that. Um, it's 100% wool. So it is definitely more of a rustic feel to the yarn, but it's perfect. Definitely love it. Okay, I brought three whips over. Let's talk about one you've seen. This is my sea glass, and I have this in a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. And this has been my 30 minutes of knitting. I even put my pin on here. 30 minutes of knitting pin. These are over at Crazy Sock Lady Co. shop right now. And this is my sea glass. So I moved this to my 30 minutes of knitting because since I started the sleeves, I feel like I've just kind of gotten stuck. I, th I think it was a little bit before I started the sleeves that I started to feel stuck. And I think it was all in the, in thinking of starting the sleeves that had me feel stuck because the sea glass sweater is a color work scrappy sweater. I mean, you don't necessarily have to use scraps. You could use whatever, but I'm doing scraps. I am using, it's a DK weight. I'm using Nipix Swish DK in the Dove Heather for color one. That is the gray that you see here. And then for color two, I am just using scraps. There's not very many in here. They're all in the back. <laughs> I'm using fingering weight scraps held double. I've picked all kinds of purples and pinks from my scrap yarns and I'm holding them double for color two. 
and it's just creating this beautiful, beautiful sweater. And the way that I'm doing it is I am changing, I'm holding color one, it's the same gray throughout the entire sweater. Color two, I'm changing colors every single round. And it was all fun and games until I started the sleeves. I have one sleeve going and you're on a smaller circumference and having to change colors every single round. I am a process knitter 100%, but I will say I'm not really enjoying the sleeves on this. This, I mean, the whole thing is, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. This has, it was a process knit throughout the body until I got towards the end and I started thinking about the fact of doing these sleeves and changing that color that often on a sleeve. Now it's a product knit 100%. I know I'm going to love this. I know I'm going to wear this all the time. So now I just want the finished item. That's what it's become. Um, yeah. So it's, it's gotten moved to 30 minutes of knitting so that I'm not shoving it in a bag and not working on it. And it is slow going for my 30 minutes of knitting. So here's my sleeve so far. I mean, look how beautiful it is. I'm going to love it. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. The ends, they talk about different ways within this pattern. This is the sea glass sweater by wool and pine designs. They talk about different ways to weave in your ends. I am doing the one that they show where you go, you just, you're just kind of looping it through the floats on the fabric. And that, I mean, you can't really tell, but you can kind of see like throughout here where I've snipped the ends. That's what that looks like. With the sleeves, I have two rounds right now that have not been woven in. All the ends are woven in on the sweater, except for these two rounds. So I have these two rounds that are not woven in. I will do two more rounds and then go back and weave these in. That probably makes no sense, but it just kind of keeps, because you have to make sure that the stitches are even on the outside. So you have to kind of pull and make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. So you're going to have big gaping stitches at your beginning of round, or you're going to have super tight stitches at your beginning of round. So you really have to kind of look at what you're doing and then weave those ends in. So with the sleeve, I feel like it's just like knit a couple rounds, weave a couple rounds in, knit a couple rounds, weave a couple rounds in so that you can kind of still be here and see what the outside of your fabric looks like. It's it just, I don't know, that's my process on it and that's what's making it easier for me with weaving in the ends. I'm following this pattern exactly. I haven't changed anything. I'm using the recommended needle size and I'm using Chow Gu. These have the blue cord. They're interchangeable. They are out of this set, which I do have over in the shop right now. These are the twist minis. Typically I will, I like to use like nine inches and things like that for sleeves. So I thought, let me give this set a try and I'm absolutely loving it. Oh get my hair stuck so I think that's it for this um I'm just trucking right along I mean I'm not really trucking I'm I don't even know what I'm doing but I'm determined to get it done determined I really need to finish it <laughs> okay sip of coffee and then we're going to talk about two new cast-ons Got my crazy sock lady mug. These are in the shop right now, along with hashtag scrappy Sunday mugs. Very requested that I get those back. So those are back in the shop. So I started a new sweater. 
I figured I finished a sweater. I moved that one to 30 minutes of knitting, so I know it's gonna get some work. So let's start a new sweater, why not? So this is in a bag by Mountain State Stitches. This is, I call this my Dexter bag. This is my sweet Dexter on there, which we did finish. We started and finished Dexter New Blood. I will not say anything about it to ruin it for anyone, but I'm still unsure about how I feel about it. That is all I will say. So the new sweater that I started is by Andrea Mowry. It is the DRK Everyday Sweater, I believe is the name of it. So I just split for the sleeves this morning. Here it is. I love this color. So beautiful. So this yarn is, again, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. This is a sport weight. This is the Claret Heather colorway. So beautiful. And yeah, I'm so excited. So I was really, really just needing, after this sweater, which I had so much fun doing, don't get me wrong. I had so much fun doing. I love the finished garment, but the cables and then the seaming, it was a lot. And then the sea glass that I'm also working on, that is just, again, like fun, easy, other than the sleeves. Not that they're not easy, but I'm not enjoying them. <laughs> um, but just more work. It's just not, you just can't just knit, 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 knit. I'm changing colors every round, you know, there's, thought that has to go into it and you have to stop and get new yarns and I just needed some a garment that I could just knit this is perfect there is no patterning it is all knitting I'm thoroughly enjoying it I feel like I got this part done in like no time I started this I wonder if my project page says it might have been like the day before St. Patrick's Day um, March 14th. Yeah. So it has not been on the needles for very long and I really have not worked on it that much. It's just that it's a very mindless knit. I'm doing size three, I think in this pattern and in the pattern she has it is more of a cropped sweater, but I'm going for not a fitted sweater and not a cropped sweater. <laughs> I don't want it to be quite as big and oversized as this, but comfy. And so I'm gonna be doing more length than the pattern calls for. But now it's just straight knitting for, gosh, Eleven inches, I think, is what I'm going to end up doing. I'm, I'm thinking in my head, how many inches have I done for like the sea glass and my arboreal? <laughs> Thirteen inches. So for this one, I'll do eleven inches, and then the ribbing. So yeah, that's that's how this one's going. And when I split for the sleeves, I this is the first time I've used these for sleeves to hold the stitches but I put the, instead of waist yarn, which is what I typically will use, I put my sleeve stitches on my knitting barber cords. And they're just hanging here. This is another thing we have in the shop right now by the knitting barber. And it has three different sizes. So I have the sleeves on the two smaller sizes, um, which are 30 inch, and then there's a 60 inch in here as well. And that's what I like to use to try on a sweater. So for these, I have a tutorial linked in the product page on the website, but they're super simple. You just literally, let me get a hold of it here, pop it on the end of your needle kind of push it down on there and then you can slide your stitches off of the needle onto this and it just pops right off 
You can try on your sweaters, hold stitches for a pattern project that you're doing. So yeah, I really like them. It was the first time using it for the sleeves and it was so easy not having to like thread the yarn and then take a stitch by stitch off. So much easier to do this. I think that's it for that pattern. I'm following the pattern so far. Like I said, I'll lengthen it um, using the needle sizes recommended. Chalgu needles for everything that I'm showing today. Only one other project here. And I just started this one yesterday. I have this in my cute little Jeep fabric bag. Barley pearls, or is it barley and pearls? Barley pearls. That's who the bag is by. So I am making another pair of journey socks. I have my leftovers of the yarn by Amplifiber that I made Jenny's socks with. The full skein and the mini skein. So I thought I'm gonna make myself a pair of journey socks with them. I showed the pair last time, I believe, that I had finished. And the journey socks is a pattern by Heidi and Lana, Margaret of Heidi and Lana. And I've worn them a couple of times and they are so great in my tennis shoes. I love them. I think they're going to be amazing for summer. So now I just want, or even in winter when you wear tennis shoes, I just want all of the, the journey socks now. And they use up so little yarn that it's perfect for using up what you have left after you knit a pair of socks or, you know, the amount that I typically have left if I'm knitting for myself or my mother-in-law. Ginny now too. <laughs> so anyways, I started this yesterday. I don't have a ton done, just a bit on the heel. I'm doing these on Chagu DPNs, US1, 2.25 millimeter. And yeah, that's about it for these. <laughs> Not a ton to show yet, but I'm very excited to have another pair on the needles with the warmer weather slowly coming along here. All right, so I have some things of Kimo Mail to show you. And like I said, the, the issue with not recording for so long is that I don't it would take me so long to show everything. Not just like things that have come in the mail, but this time with the retreat and everything, it would really take a long time. So you did see um, this yarn from Fiber Seed. I got that at the retreat. I'm gonna show you something else, but I'm hoping to knit with a lot of it soon. I have plans for some of it, not all of it, some of it, so. All right. Oh, we did have, let's do this real quick. We had a giveaway last time. It's past St. Patrick's Day. I'm so sorry. But for the Tidley Bakes Four Leaf Clover Progress Keeper. So I'm going to put the winner here on the bottom of the screen. If you would just email me at crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com with your shipping information and I can get that sent out to you. So I did have some more Progress Keepers come. I don't think... I think these were after the last time. So these are by Pit Pitter Patter Polymer. And these, there's a piece of toast and then a cosmic brownie. They are so cute. So I'm excited to use these now that I've shown them. I, I kind of forgot that I had gotten them. They were tucked away in a bag. I did receive my row one yarn subscription for March as well as my yarnable. So we're going to talk about both of those on here. The so row one is a mini skein yarn subscription. And it's a different dyer each month. These colors are beautiful. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> get the, there's always info here in a little thing. Can't get it out this time though. There we go. Oh. They always give you a little treat too. And I love the Hershey's cookies and cream. I gotta eat that today or Wyatt will steal it. Oh, just a cute little sheep stitch marker. That is so cute. All right, let's see who the yarn dyer is. They always have a piece of paper in here that tells you about the yarn dyer for the month. It is polka dot sheep. I've never used their yarn before. So these are all in their 80-20 base. It tells you a little bit about them. It tells you all the colorway names, where you can find them. That's one thing I love about them is you get to try out new dyers. Oh my goodness, you guys. I love all of these. Look at those. Wow. These are beautiful. Yeah. I want like sweaters in all of these. That is so pretty. So that was my row one. And then I did get the yarnable. Typically I do a video for these separate, but we're not, we're not going to do that this month. <laughs> we're just going to talk about it here and unbox it here. So this is the March yarnable, which is a yarn subscription service by Cheryl of hypnotic yarn that I have been getting for so long. You guys probably just heard the heat kick on. Um, I've been getting this for so long and I absolutely love it. I get the fingering weight one skein version. You can do either a fingering weight or DK one skein or two skeins. You have choices and you can kind of customize what you want for what type of projects you typically knit. Since I do a lot of socks, which I've done a lot of DK weight socks recently as well, but I stick with the fingering weight and I actually already opened this before. <laughs> today because I could not wait. <laughs> that would be so long to wait. So I, I am excited about this month. So anyways, the March Yarnable was shenanigans. It's brought to you by Silly Gnomes, Lucky Clovers, and Gold at the end of a rainbow. There's always a card that tells you a bit about the box, has a scratch off um, at the bottom that you can use there's a coupon code that's good for that month that you were in. So like this, I got this at the beginning of March. It's good till the end of March for hypnotic yarn. Uh, it tells you all about the extras because you do always get extras in it. The extras this month were a stitch marker set from three by the sea designs. Let's see if it'll focus there. St. Patrick's Day themed. And then a mini skein dyed by Arkansas Yarn Co. The full skein that came in the March Yarnable box. It's gonna get blown out. There we go. Look at how delicate this yarn is look at those speckles they are just i was just blown away when i opened this and saw how just perfect and delicate the speckles are in this yarn i'm gonna not i've been trying to as i get the yarnable knitted up i'm saving this because i think this would lend itself very very well in a shawl with like grab a couple of other colors that you know go with the speckles and it would just look amazing i think so i'm gonna save this for that i mean i don't know what shawl but it'll it'll be shawl <laughs> what else so i think that was it for stuff that has come in the mail i wanted to show you another thing that i got at the retreat that I probably should not have even got out of my yarn cabinet because now that I have it out of the cabinet, I really want to cast on this wrap with it. So at the retreat, we saw a woman wearing a festive wrap, which is a pattern by Amba O'Brien. 
and of course we wanted to knit it because that was it just at that retreat you saw so many it was cold so there were there was knitwear all around i mean there were knitters anyways but because of the cold weather there was just so much knitwear and you just would feel so inspired and think oh my gosh what is that pattern and then you find out the pattern and you look it up and you're like well i want to knit that and then saturday there was yarn there so i'm how perfect was that <laughs> anyways we got yarn for the festive wrap from mcmullen fiber co so we got a mini skein set this is the canyon collection mega mini skein set on her 80-20 base. Oh no, I'm dropping yarn. Let me see if I can get this to focus here. And look at how beautiful that is. So this is 12 minis. The Festigrap calls for 16. So we grabbed an extra skein and this is the one that I got. This is Frozen Forest. And I think it's going to go very well. My plan and my nails even match and I did not do that on purpose. I mean, not exactly, but pretty well. So I think that means I need to cast on because I did my nails before I even thought to get this out of the cabinet. So it's a sign, right? That I just need to cake this up and cast on. I mean, I don't need to, but I want to. <laughs> but anyways, the plan is I'm going to use the full skein for the first two sections and then i'll start in on the minis and then the last two sections i'll finish off with this so that is the plan for this yarn from the retreat and now i really want to start it because my nails match i mean i wanted to already but now my nails match and i just want to start it <laughs> So maybe I will. <laughs> Gonna have to, I don't have the pattern printed off yet. I did buy it, but I do not have it printed off yet. Let me check my notes to see what we need to chat about. Okay, we did. I'm checking it off. I have it on the notes app on my phone now. So I'm checking off everything I've talked about. All right, so shop stuff. I've talked a little bit about things that have happened um, over at Crazy Sock Lady Co. So we now carry Opal. We now carry Cascade, um, Heritage Prince, and the mugs are back in stock. We have Crazy Sock Lady and we also have Scrappy Sunday. So those are some things that have happened over at the shop. We also, I'll put a couple photos in here. We have some Mama Jess knits and fingering and DK in some amazing colors for spring. We have the Crazy Sock Lady colorway from Kimber's Cozy Creations in fingering and DK. And we also have mini skein sets that break down those the colors that are in the Crazy Sock Lady colorway and have a mini skein set with those colors. It's so beautiful. And there's some fun things coming from her as well soon. So I think that's it for new things that are over in the shop. We of course have all of our needles, our notions there's tons of other yarn as well in the shop i'm really trying to expand it and carry even more things um but we are always your one-stop sock knitting shop we have anything and everything that you need for sock knitting and beyond so definitely head over and check it out if you want there's there's always some fun beautiful things over there in the shop i think we are also expanding now to have some in-person hours. This is something I'm trying because it's been so requested and I was doing the open studio day and thinking about doing that like once a quarter or once a month. And for this next month, at least throughout April, I'm gonna try every other Saturday. We had our first in-person 
shopping this past Saturday the 19th and the dates and times will be listed on the website. Our next one I do know is going to be April 12th. No, <laughs> scratch that. April 2nd, <laughs> April 12th. Where did that date even come from? April 2nd, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is our next, our next time. Um, so yeah, the dates, times, location, address, everything is over on the website. So you can head over and check that out and see if you can join us for any of those times. We're just gonna try it and see how it goes. And then we can kind of adjust, see if maybe once a month would be better. Um, if you are local or semi-local and you're gonna be in the area, just always reach out to me at k at crazysockladyco.com. See, you know, if you wanna come in and shop, hey, are you gonna be there on this date for me to come in? I'm typically over there four or five days a week. So I'm always open to people stopping in or if you like, I need this size needle help, <laughs> you, you know, email me. And if I'm over there, you can come just, you know, get what you need from the shop. I'm, I'm always happy to do that now that I've got everything kind of set up and ready to go. So it's easier for me to do those sales in person. Always happy to do that for y'all. I think that's it on the shop. Summer sock camp stuff. I want to just touch base about summer sock camp really quick because I've been getting so, 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 so many emails about is summer sock camp happening? Last year, you know, you had already announced some things and yes, summer sock camp is happening. Yes, I'd already announced some things by this time last year, but things will be different this year for many reasons. I've talked a bit about it here and there, but I, I think it's pretty known that I got pretty overwhelmed <laughs> with summer sock camp last year. It was great, it was so much fun, but I definitely did get overwhelmed. So there will be changes this year and quite a few things about summer sock camp. I haven't done any big announcement videos yet because there have been, there you know are so many changes. And one of the changes is that there will not be VIP campers this year. Um, that was just way too much for me to take on last year and I mean, I took it on, but it was way, it was way too much. I had so much fun getting to know everybody and I'm so sorry if anyone's going to be disappointed, but I do just have to be realistic with what I myself can handle. And it, with it being throughout the summer as well, it's just, the boys are all out of school. You know, I just have to be realistic with what our schedules, um, you know, with what I can do. So there will not be VIP campers. There will still be some Instagram lives and fun things throughout the summer. Um, another change is that when it comes to sponsors, things, there won't be sponsors, I guess you could say, as far as things outside of Crazy Sock Lady Co. Shop. I am still gonna have some yarn, some bags, some pins, mugs, we've got keychains. We've got all the things that we've normally had as far as items go relating to summer sock camp but they're all going to be over at crazy sock lady co the past year there was so many requests for people for everything to be in one location that it was fine that there were different shops that had things but could we also have kits at the crazy sock lady shop so that you're only paying shipping once so that's something that I'm working on. I've got some of my wholesale accounts working on items for yarn bags. So some of the names that you already see at Crazy Sock Lady Co, that's where you're gonna see the Summer Sock Camp merchandise. Um, as far as, I've got Kimber's Cozy Creations working on a mini skein set for me. And there's gonna be so many more, but that's the first one that comes to my mind. And everything will be in that central location so that you aren't paying shipping from multiple places and trying to catch multiple updates. So you're, you're gonna see, you know, yarn still, bags still. Um, they will be from different makers, but you're gonna be seeing the same items just at Crazy Sock Lady Co. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm excited to be able to do that because I do know that shipping is so expensive, especially if you are somebody who's international and you want to get multiple items for summer sock camp. It's just insanity to try to order from so many different locations. So I think this is gonna help keep everything more streamlined and you know have that one place where you can just go and get those items. I do not have dates yet for when all of those items will be available. The, I will of course announce on YouTube ahead of time so that everybody can plan. Um, 
but definitely Instagram is, and I know not everybody uses Instagram, but I highly recommend it just for keeping up to date with the knitting community. That's the best place to find out info on anything that I'm working on. Keep up to date with life. If I, you know, don't get over here to record for YouTube, that's just the first place that things are usually announced. But when it comes to summer stock camp and all of the merchandise and items, I will for sure announce with plenty of, you know, time for everybody to plan. So summer stock camp, camp will still start on June 1st. It'll still just be knit all the socks all summer long, as many socks as you want. <laughs> Try new things. It'll still be the same. There just will be some changes this year compared to last year. We're still gonna have fun, still gonna enjoy it. Um, I just wanna be able to relax a little bit more and enjoy it along with you guys. So it's gonna be great. And I'm hoping to do some in-person things at the shop just maybe for the days we're open just make it camp themed or something and yeah i don't know we're gonna we're gonna come up with some things to make it fun maybe a picnic or something a meetup so many ideas um and there'll still be all the instagram lives and things and all the groups on ravelry and all that stuff what else? I think that's it as far as the knitting stuff go. I will catch you guys up a bit just on life stuff because it has been so long. So if you were only here for the knitting, thank you so much for joining and I will talk with y'all soon. If you're sticking around to talk about life stuff, I already kind of chatted a bit about the knitting weekends that I had. They were just so much fun. It had been so long since I'd done anything like that. That used to be something that happened fairly regularly when I lived in Arizona and it was just, it had been so long and it was so nice to just have two weekends. And I'm, it was nice that they were so close together, but I kind of wish they were a little further apart so that I still had like that to look forward to, I guess. It's kind of like, oh, both my, my knitting weekends are done now. And they were like, boom, boom and done. But yeah, it was great to get to know some new friends better and just knit it that's what I love about those types of weekends is you just get to knit and relax and talk about knitting or not about knitting about life or about whatever just great people so those were great uh, lots of questions about Austin's knee I did update on Instagram but if you missed it there um, I think at the last video we were waiting on MRI results um, for his knee that he hurt playing basketball. If you missed that, he had a, an injury playing basketball. There were no tears in the MRI. He did sprain his MCL, his ACL, and he had a very, very bad bone bruise. So why not, like, just don't hurt one thing, let's hurt three. <laughs> is what I kept kind of joking like man you really you really did it it's like you didn't tear anything thankfully but sometimes those sprains can be and bone bruises like they, they can be just as bad as far as the pain and stuff goes so we're finally the swelling is finally seems to be gone and he started physical therapy he's gonna have probably he's been doing physical therapy for almost a month now and she said probably three months so he's still got a ways to go he did have to miss the rest of his basketball season, which was a bummer, but he's, he's well on the way to a full recovery and hoping he'll get involved in a basketball team not long after he's recovered and kind of get back out there if he wants to, but I love watching him play. So yeah, that's about it with that. He's just working on recovery. He's off of his crutches, so that's good. Still wear it, has to wear the brace though, but he's getting there. And that's really, I mean, that kind of catches up on life stuff. It's just been kind of the same old stuff. We've got Austin's physical therapy appointments and Wyatt's School of Rock stuff. It's been very busy, good, like I said, good things. Good things that Austin's on his way to recovery. Wyatt's still enjoying the School of Rock. Um, Eric's been busy with work. I've been busy with the shop. So all good things, just been a very busy March. And I think the, the knitting, two knitting weekends definitely added to that because it was just a lot of like getting ready for trips and then coming home and settling back in from trips. So it was a lot of stuff within the past month. All right, I've got quite a bit of stuff to clean up here. It's about lunchtime. My stomach is growling. 
<laughs> so I'm going to go find myself something to eat for lunch, clean up this mess, get this podcast up finally, finally, after a month. Has it been a full month? Yes, it actually has because, yeah, it's been a full month since an episode was up. Thank you guys so much for joining me for today's episode. It was so nice to get to sit down and chat with y'all again. Maybe next time I'll have a new shawl on the needles. I, I really might just start this this afternoon. Why not? I could run over my Swift and stuff's at the shop. I can run over and cake it up on the way to knit group tonight. That sounds like a plan to me. It might be what I do. But I hope that you guys are doing well. And again, thank you for joining me. Hopefully it won't be a whole month before I sit down and chat with y'all again. But until then, whenever that time may be, happy knitting. Bye.